It's remarkable that DaVinci Resolve is free. You get everything you need to edit with, color, sound mix, and the majority of people out there don't actually need to upgrade to the studio version. And I thought I was one of them people until I found some of the features that the studio version offered and then everything changed. The first feature that started to convince me to upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio was noise reduction. I was editing my KNF Concept VND filter review and in that video I actually went to the zoo and recorded some animals. And not knowing at the time, I severely underexposed that footage and it is ridiculously noisy. That's when I found out about DaVinci Resolve having its own noise reduction built into the software. And a lot of the other ways to be able to get noise reduction, you have to pay for a third party plugin like Neat Video, which is amazing, but that's like a couple hundred pounds. And finding out that DaVinci Resolve actually has its own noise reduction built into the software, I thought, perfect. Let's just remove all the noise and get on and post this video. And as soon as I started adjusting the settings, I got hit with a huge DaVinci Resolve Studio watermark. Having noise reduction built into your video editing software that comes included with the price is probably more than enough to purchase it alone, considering how much other third party plugins, like I said, with Neat Video are. I didn't actually purchase it then after finding out about the noise reduction. I just thought I'll take the hit and post the video because at the end of the day, it was only a few clips that had quite bad noise on. But after purchasing Studio, I went back to that video and played around with the settings and it works so well. The footage is way more cleaner now and the settings I used was, I put it on, you have the options of one to five, I put it on five and you have the options of faster or better and I chose better because I wanted to see the best results. And having the best settings really slowed down my machine. So if you are going to use noise reduction in DaVinci, then I do suggest you do that at the very last minute. And where I normally place it in my node tree is at the very beginning. Sometimes you don't need to use the max settings and the better function. Maybe faster is better, because if you choose faster, it just makes the timeline and the playback run a little bit faster. And having the highest, best settings, like number five, are better anyway. Especially if you're using skin tones, it might smooth out the skin. You can add sharpness after to get that detail back, but I do suggest don't go in too far with it because it does take a lot of processing power. The second feature I only found out the other week, and that is the auto silence function. For someone who edits a lot of YouTube videos pretty much every week, the amount of time that I spent during that editing phase cutting out all of the dead space and the silence between my clips and then going through really and cutting out stuff that I don't really want. But in DaVinci Resolve Studio, the auto silence feature all you have to do is transcribe the clip and all you have to do is go to the top right corner and then click on remove dead silence and then you literally click embed into video and it automatically cuts all of the silence out of your video it can save so much time going forward if you do edit a lot of videos and then you can just get straight into editing the actual content itself instead of just removing all of that dead flow the third feature that made me buy studio i only found out about last week and that is voice isolation. Even with the best of mics and wind protection, you still can hear the air conditioning in the room, or in my case, the wind and the sea. While I was on holiday last month, I was filming a video and it was going really well, but the further on I went, I was going towards the beach and the sea. The background noise from the sea and the wind was just too much. And I was using the DJI mic, what I'm using now, with the wind muff on, and I thought that would have been enough. And in the end, even when I was down there, I just, I could hear in myself that this is gonna to be too loud. So I decided to call it and not even finish that video. When I got back and listened to it, I really thought, yeah, I'm not even gonna bother posting this just because the wind is just too much. And even though at the time it might not seem like anything's happening, you're just creating content, you're not getting that many views, you're not getting any paid work, it's all happening in the background. But after finding out about voice isolation in DaVinci Resolve, I went back to that project, opened up the file, turned on voice isolation, and I was amazed by the results. All you have to do is press a one button to turn it on, and you can adjust it from zero to 100%. And even though at the time it might not seem like anything's happening, you're just creating content, you're not getting that many views, you're not getting any paid work, it's all happening in the background. You can go deeper into the settings and just adjust it how you want, but if you want that quick voice isolation feature, all you have to do is press one button and your the vocals still sound really nice. And now I found out about this feature, I might even go back and just start filming the rest of the video. And the last feature that sold me on DaVinci Resolve Studio was the auto captions feature. I've had my eye on this one for a little while because normally how I get my auto captions from my TikTok and my Instagrams is by making the video in DaVinci, exporting it, and then opening it up in CapCut to do my captions there because it's free. 
and doing this worked well for a bit but it does add a significant amount of time onto my workflow because I had to render the video twice and then go through the captions in another software it ends up double compressing the video so the quality wasn't even that good anyway what I love about the auto captions is that it's just so easy to do it's not just built into the software so all you have to do is click one button it's very accurate DaVinci Resolve done a great job of auto captioning my TikTok that I made last week and I literally had to change like two words and from that I can change all of the settings, I can change the font, I can change the colour if I want to stroke background or drop shadow and I can save that as a preset so every time I go to transcribe my clip in the future all I have to do is go up to the timeline section and click transcribe audio from sequence and then I can click on preset and click on the preset that I want. And because DaVinci Resolve is so good at transcribing, there is little change to do. Rather than when I was on CapCut, I had to render out the video, go on there, change it, and I had to change quite a lot of the captions. I didn't quite get it right. And then change the style each and every time and then render it out again. It just saves so much more time and it just makes life so much easier and faster when you are editing videos. But just remember when you do export the video to click on burn captions into video. The amount of times I've done that on Premiere Pro where I've rendered out a project and not clicked burn captions into video, I've watched it back and I'll have to re-render it all over again. So the example video I showed for the auto captions for this video was this video. And after I was editing it and I was doing that segment, I actually went through and adjusted all of the auto captions for the video. It was near spot on perfect. The only word for some reason it couldn't see was Da Vinci. It kept saying something else like Ventra, like the old Mac OS. But this was unbelievable. And yeah, I'm, I'm really shocked of how well it was. And it's an eight minute video as well. It done it very quickly. And yeah, the only thing I'd say bad about it is that there was tiny gaps in between each subtitle. So it would do the little pop off and pop back on effect. So I did have to go through and tighten them all up. And if there's a way to fix that in the settings, then that's perfect. And that was really my only bad thing about the auto captions in DaVinci. And also with DaVinci Resolve Studio, you have the ability to edit 10 bit 422 footage. Now I found this a little bit weird because even on the free version, I was editing my 10 bit 422 footage on my R6 Mark II. But I've seen a lot of people out there who can't do that and you need the studio version to be able to open the file up in DaVinci. I don't know, I understand that really. I don't know if it was a glitch or if it's only certain cameras. But yeah, if you're struggling to open 10-bit 422 footage in DaVinci Resolve, then that alone is more than enough of a reason to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio because why buy a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pound camera that can shoot 10-bit color in 422 log when you can't even take advantage of that in your editing software like DaVinci Resolve and adjust all the colors to how you want. You may as well get a cheaper camera that can shoot 8-bit. DaVinci Resolve Studio is absolutely amazing. And if these features haven't convinced you to buy it yet, then that's perfectly fine. The free version is more than enough for most people out there, like I said earlier. But if all of them other features haven't convinced you to buy DaVinci Resolve Studio, then this one might. And that is that it's a one-time purchase of £295 for life and you get free upgrades every year to the next version. Not long ago before switching to DaVinci Resolve, I did the maths on how much Adobe would cost over like 10 years than DaVinci Resolve Studio. And DaVinci Resolve Studio is gonna cost you £295 over 10 years and Adobe Premiere Pro is gonna cost you somewhere something ridiculous like £7,000. So what's the video software do you use? Do you use DaVinci Resolve free version, the studio version, Premiere Pro or Final Cut? Do you think DaVinci Resolve Studio is worth it? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. See you later.